Welcome to this sermon video of Trinity United Church in Listable, Ontario and Atwood United Church. My name is Beth Kerr and I am privileged to serve as minister for these two congregations. As our region has moved to orange on the pandemic response scale, we once again move to online worship to do our part to reduce the number of contacts in our social circles each week. This sermon video is the first part of our online worship offering. We also gather in real time on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on Zoom. And everyone is most welcome. Just contact me or either church for the link. I will endeavor to post a version of this with some added pieces for the Zoom, from the Zoom service on Sunday afternoons for those who are not able to join us on Zoom on Sundays. We understand that some of our friends at Crescent Care may be watching us each Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday morning, I'm not sure which, and we are delighted that you are able to join us through the wonders of technology. While we will remain online only until such time as our public health unit returns to green or yellow on the, on the pandemic scale, if you have questions at any point about whether the church is online or in person, please contact either church for more information. Today's sermon is recorded at Atwood United Church for the first Sunday of Advent, November 29th, 2020. to dream of a broken world healed. We will sing songs of longing and we will wait in hope. Hope is the theme of the day. What does hope look like? Sometimes hope looks like a refugee family arriving at the airport, wondering if they can find a new home in this country. Other times, hope looks like school kids advocating for action to reduce our impact on the planet. Still other times, it is a congregation of mostly gray-haired people learning how to use technology to stay connected as a faith community during a pandemic. Hope looks like the people we see in the news. Hope looks like the people beside us. What does hope feel like? Hope feels like the first warm day of spring. You know it will get cold again, but summer will come. Hope feels like a door that has always been locked and bared moving when you push it. You may only move a little bit and you may wonder if you have the strength to open it, but opening has become a possibility. Hope feels like an encouraging word just when you thought you couldn't go on any longer. What is it like to live in hope? Hope always strains to see the first glimmer of light on the horizon. Hope listens to the angel voices of kindness and mercy. Hope doesn't believe the haters and the doomsayers. call to worship. God of all those who yearn for a glimmer of assurance on the long journey home to you, come. Come with a vast storehouse of renewed dreams, 
hopes, and peacefulness. God of hope, come. Enter into my memory and remind me often of the yearning of the people of history. Stir up the stories of how the ancestors hung on to your promises, how they stole hope from tiny glimmers about you, passed on from age to age. Help me to hear the loud crying voices of the prophets who proclaimed that a new age would dawn. God of hope come, enter into this heart of mine, which often loses itself in self, missing the message of your encouragement because I am so entangled in the web of my own world of life. Enable me not to lose sight of the power of your presence or the truth of your consolation. God of hope come, enter into the lives of all those I hold dear, the ones whose lives are marked with pain, struggle and deep anxiety, those whose lives spare ongoing heartaches, those whose difficulties threaten to overwhelm them with helplessness or despair. Come and gift them with a belief about you and your never ending faithfulness and companionship. God of hope come, enter into every human heart that cries out for a glimpse of your love for a sign of your welcoming presence, for a taste of your happiness. Be the one who calms the restless and gentles the ache of our human journey. God of hope come, enter this Advent season with a grace of joy and laughter. May we experience moments of delight and glimpses of pleasure. Let this gift come from deep within. Replenish all with the joyful blessings that only your peace can bring. God of hope, come, be the morning star in our midst, the light that can never go out, the beacon of hope guiding our way to you. Come into our midst and make our lives a home where everlasting goodness resonates with assuring love and vigorous hope. Amen. And our scripture today is part of the lectionary, Mark 13, verses 24 to 37. In those days, after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather his chosen people from the four corners of the earth from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words certainly will not pass away. 
But nobody knows when that day or hour will come, not the angels in heaven and not the sun, only the Father knows. Watch out, stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do and told the day doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. May God bless to us this reading from Holy Scripture. Amen. I've always found the lectionary for the first Sunday of Advent a bit jarring. It's always drawn from towards the end of one of the Gospels, just before the crucifixion, which always seems like such a very strange place from which to begin our journey towards the birth. The details differ from one Gospel to another, but here in Mark we have a couple of key refrains. The first is to watch out for the signs of the times. The second is to stay alert. And the third is don't let the Messiah catch you asleep. Well, I have to admit that I'm not thrilled with any of that advice in the middle of this pandemic. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of watching for the signs of the time. Every day I check our provincial COVID case count, then I look for the email Monday through Friday that says that there are new numbers up for the Huron Perth Health District. And then I check Manitoba's numbers since I still have a lot of friends there. And sometimes I also check in on other provinces and around other countries around the world. And frankly, those signs of the time are very discouraging right now. And to add to that, I've been encountering the increasing stories about people taking out their frustration with this long pandemic on frontline workers. There was the assault on a BC Walmart employee. There are folks who have been rude to public health workers who contact them. And some of our local restaurants have encountered some disrespectful behavior. So, frankly, some days I'd rather hide under the bed and ignore the world around me completely. These signs of the times may signal that something is near, but it is not the start of summer with a fit that a fig tree with new leaves would tell us about. These signs of the time point towards a very different Christmas for most of us, possibly even a Christmas under lockdown conditions. Furthermore, I am really tired of living on high alert. Stay alert, this gospel lesson repeats again and again, and I want to shout back, yep, already drained from being hypervigilant all the time. I'd like to just relax a little bit and have dinner with some friends and family or plan a church service where the only criteria were what would be most meaningful and worshipful for the gathered community, not how do we make this as safe as possible to avoid transmitting the coronavirus. At the same time, I have to remind myself these days to keep diligent about all the things I have learned over the last eight months. It can be so easy to forget the hand sanitizer on the way in or out of the store or the church, or to get too close to someone in a parking lot because we are tired of half-shouted conversations from six feet away. I don't want the virus to show up at the grocery store or the park or the church someday and find me asleep in my safety protocols so that I inadvertently become its new host adding yet another person and potentially all my contacts to the case counts. If there's one thing this virus is teaching us, it's that there is so very much we do not know. In fact, because of asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic, because asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transmission may account for as much as 50% of all transmission, according to the CDC recently, it appears that we can never know for sure unless we've been 100% isolated for at least two weeks, that we don't have the virus and cannot potentially transmit it to others, even if we look and feel just fine right now. Radical humility is required to acknowledge that we might be carriers without even knowing it, and to act accordingly. <laughs> then there's the bit about staying awake. Again, I have to say that if the human one comes at two or three or four or five a.m., I actually really hope that he finds me sound asleep. They might not, of course. There have been too many moments during this pandemic where I fall asleep right away, 
but then I'm wide awake in the middle of the night, unable to get back to sleep. And I know that lots of people have found that their sleep has been disrupted by the profound uncertainties and anxieties of our time. Staying awake is not something I strive for these days. My goal is to stay asleep. So on the surface, this passage offers terrible advice for the first Sunday of Advent in the middle of a pandemic. Better advice would be to limit your exposure to the signs of the times. Too much news right, no right now just leads to stress and burnout. To allow yourself times and spaces to relax your guard and allow your body to come out of hyper alert mode for a safe while in a safe context. And to protect your ability to get a good night's sleep as best you can. Yet as I sat longer with this passage this week and thought about it in the context of preparing for the human one, as this translation puts it, or the son of man, as many older translations put it, I started to wonder if we need to reconsider these three refrains in light of the Christmas story. What are the signs of our time that we are invited to look for are signs that God is already present with us. What would, what would that look like in the midst of a pandemic? Where would we find beauty and love? How is hope being nurtured? It may feel at times like we are in the depths of a very long winter, but where do we see the first green leaves on the fig tree, heralding that summer is coming? When I look at the news and the world around me from that angle, I tend to notice different things. There's the teenager in London, Ontario, who challenged the racism of a 60-something-year-old woman in the grocery store who had written on her mask, thanks, China. Her courage reminds me of God's presence. Then in a small group Zoom gathering this week with friends from Manitoba, which is currently on lockdown, there was this marvelous feeling of relief to know that we are not alone in our stresses and struggles around all of this. The particular realities differed greatly, but the sense of, oh my, this is hard, was universal. Glimpses of community where people dare to be real remind me of God's presence also. And a friend who has struggled with respiratory issues for many years, making her particularly vulnerable in the midst of this pandemic, shared how a neighbor checks in with her every morning as she gets off her night shift to see if she might need anything. And people caring for each other remind me of God's presence too. And a Thursday night study group, all three breakout groups independently from one another diverge from the planned questions to talk about current concerns around racism in our county. When the Spirit moves people to work for justice, I see God's presence amongst us as well. So absolutely, we need to continue to pay attention to the signs relating to, the pub to public health so we can continue to act responsibly based on the conditions around us. But this Advent, let's prepare for the human one by looking for signs of God's presence. Often they are subtle and require attentiveness to notice, but they are always there. Similarly, what if the things I need to stay alert to are less the worries and fears and stresses of the pandemic and more the possibilities to cultivate hope, love, joy, and beauty in the midst of it all? Absolutely, we need to acknowledge and grieve our disappointments this season, and for most of us, there are many of those. At a different gathering this week, I heard a story from a colleague about how disappointment that went unacknowledged morphed into toxic anger. So by all means, let's not pretend the world is as we wish it would be this year. Still, let's not let all of the disappointments make us oblivious to the possibilities as well. Just because things cannot be the way they have always been, or maybe even the way we want them to be, doesn't mean they cannot still be good. Perhaps the most effective way to cultivate hope, which is the theme of the first week of Advent, is to do things we can to enhance beauty and love and peace in our lives and in our world, regardless of our circumstances. Don't let what's not possible keep you from embracing what is. Finally, I wonder if staying awake this Advent is not an invitation to sleepless nights, if we can avoid them, but rather an invitation to be fully present in each moment of this season. When we are tired or discouraged or stressed, it can be easy to start sleepwalking through our lives. We go about the motions, but our hearts and souls aren't really there. We're numb, 
Or we can be tempted to distract ourselves with things that don't really bring lasting satisfaction or connection with those we love. It's easy for our minds to race ahead or our hearts to swirl with a complex mess of feelings at a time like this. But I wonder if the exhortation to stay awake in this passage might be an invitation to find practices that help us to ground ourselves in the moment right now. The time that we are living rather than worrying about the past or the future. There are lots of such practices out there and everyone needs to find the ones that work for them. But here are a few ideas. Take three deep breaths and feel the air moving from the tip of your nose to the bottom of your lungs. Pause and return to the world around you. Breath prayer may be the oldest form of prayer and it is still practiced in many different religions today. Or you might set aside some time for quiet prayer or devotional reading each day. It doesn't need to be a long time. Even 15 minutes can make a big difference. Pick a time of day that works for you and make a commitment to yourself to keep that time. Or get outside. Nature and connection to the creative energy that flows out there can be so grounding, even in the November grayness. Or move and focus on your body, whether it's dancing in the kitchen or going for a run or walk or doing some gentle stretches. Getting back in touch with our body can help us to be fully in the present moment. Or take a minute to acknowledge all of those stresses and worries that are swirling around in your head. Give each of them a name, identify them. See if there's anything you can do about any of them. And then imagine the ones you cannot do anything about being entrusted to God like a feather on the wind. Or take time to truly savor a small pleasure. Sip your coffee, eat a piece of chocolate or a Christmas cookie with full attentiveness, hug a loved one, pet an animal. Or do something that makes you laugh out loud. Watch the silliest movie you know, read a funny book, phone a friend who always tells the best stories. In these crazy times, it is well worth identifying what keeps us grounded as individuals in our best selves, which could be very well not be anything on that list I've just read, because it's often different for different people. But can you figure out even one strategy that might help you to be more in the moment this Advent and Christmas? Then give yourself permission to prioritize that. This Christmas may not be everything we wish it could be, but it can still be beautiful if we are able to be fully present to one another in the midst of it. This Advent, like every Advent, we are preparing again for the coming of the human one in our midst. We are celebrating how God takes human form amongst us all the time, everywhere, not just in a stable in Bethlehem 2000 years ago, but right here, right now. So as human people in a challenging time, let's look for signs of God's presence amongst us. Let's stay alert to possibilities for beauty, for joy, for love. And let's stay awake to the present moment so we won't miss God, Emmanuel, in our midst, today or ever. May it be so. Amen.
God of hope, we bring our prayers this day in a spirit of gratitude and hopefulness. We may not always be optimistic about what we see around us. We may be disappointed or discouraged. Yet in you, we find the courage to hope even when hope is hard to find. And so we pray for and with frontline workers dealing with rude comments and even violence as they strive to help keep people safe in grocery stores and restaurants, making contact tracing calls and driving buses, working in hospitals and pharmacies. Elected officials and public health professionals who must make challenging decisions amid uncertainty and conflicting needs and value systems in the public interest. For those who are sick with COVID-19 in our community, in our province, across our country and around the world, and for their loved ones. For all those who are in quarantine or isolation this day, For all those whose mental well being is challenged by the pandemic, for those who are feeling acutely lonely, for those who are discouraged or despondent, for those who are struggling with anxiety, for those who have reached utter exhaustion, for those wrestling with addictions, for children who have had to make so many adjustments, and elders who struggle to make sense of the world in which we find ourselves. And in particular this day, we pray for Dave, Tanya, Gord, Betty Jane, Rosita, the Beach family, those who are homeless, those suffering from mental illness, and others we add in a moment of shared silence. Loving God, in times of challenge, may we shine the light of hope in the lives of those around us so that together we may find pathways of love and beauty, no matter what the world throws our way. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, whose arrival in the world once again we await, praying together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go into whatever this week might hold for us, let us go now in peace and confidence. May God bless us with hope and gift us with open hearts to give and receive blessing. Go hopefully from this time of worship to love and serve God. Amen. And we end as we will for the rest of Advent with Go Light Our World. Thank you.
Thank you.